What's going on? You're in the Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. It is Revenge of the 90s with Limp Bizkit, and their new album still sucks. They released that on October 31st. This is studio album number six for the band. Their first in a decade follows 2011's Gold Cobra. And I will admit that I have really grown to love Limp Bizkit as I've gotten older. I'm just tickled that they made another record. I think most people are, frankly. This is only their second album since 2003. I think it's pretty amazing that they're still even together. But we have the, the main lineup that everybody's familiar with, not the original lineup, but the main lineup that was there for five of the six albums is back doing this record. I think it's really cool. You got DJ Lethal. You got John Otto on drums, Sam Rivers on bass. Arguably the most underrated rhythm section in a band, I think, in the last quarter century. If there was an award that you could hand out to these guys, they deserve it. Wes Borland is always doing his thing, always experimental, but in that experimentation, it's just, there's this signature element that is just so him, you know? And that's what I love about the guy. He's so much fun to listen to. I really think as a band, they're very misunderstood, very underrated. And I think that the Fred Durst antics always kind of overshadowed a lot of really what was going on there sonically, which was impressive. I mean, really, they, they write and compose some really cool music. And if you're around during the heyday between 97 and 2000, I think a lot of what killed them was overexposure. You know, all these different outlets that had begun to develop, the internet starts to boom a little bit. You have TRL. I mean, you have these different radio outlets that are playing Limp Bizkit nonstop. And they put out three records in four years. So, I mean, the fact that they're saturating the market themselves. You know, and Fred Durst is a front man. He's a lot to take, admittedly. Uh, you know, like I said, as I've gotten older, I, I find his snarkiness and his wordplay and everything that goes along with him uh, to be brilliant, actually. What I really admire about the guy is that he's not a great singer. He's not that great of a rapper. But... He does both well enough and he can write a melody and he can write a hook. And he's just one of those artists that plays to his strength. That's what he does so well. And I think that that's what makes him such a solid frontman. And, you know, his personality, is it's toned down a little bit, but, you know, he's there's a song on here called Dad Vibes. So he's obviously talking about fatherhood and some of this stuff that goes along with aging. But, you know, there's still plenty of immaturity, plenty of snarky fun stuff that is very much you know, just signature Limp Biscuit. even the title itself, these guys, like, just so self-deprecating and funny in that regard. Limp Biscuit still sucks. I mean, this is a Limp Biscuit record. You know exactly what you're going to get into when you press play on this thing. I wish it was a little longer. It's only 32 minutes, 12 tracks. It is a little hot, but I think it's a sign of maybe a second wave of this band coming in and doing their thing, and who knows, maybe they'll just pump out another three records in four years and call it quits. But if they do, I think it'd be a really cool thing I would love to hear it, more music from these guys. Honestly, like the the rest of the band, um, you know, I've I've come to terms with Fred Durst, but I've really always admired the rest of the band and the music that these guys create. This thing opens up with "Out of Style." It's this heavy mid tempo rocker. Uh, you know, definitely, it's got this Wes Borland guitar intro and some signature heavy riffs that are going on there. Fred Durst is working with that echoey vocal thing. There's some ambient moments in and out of the song. There's very much here that is signature 90s Limp Biscuit that I loved about the opener on that. Dirty Rotten Biscuit is your second track. Uh, it's just got that heavy new metal feel that they're known for. And, you know, embracing the biscuit. There's lots of lyrics and, you know, snarky stuff talking about the biscuit and playing on that. Your third track, Dad Vibes. This is the first time that you hear uh, them playing a little more with the hip-hop sound versus the rock and roll sound. It's probably one of the few songs that he doesn't swear on on this record, too, which I think is kind of funny. Which leads into your fourth song, Turn It Up, Bitch. Uh, it's uh, just drums and bass. I like the simplicity of this song. It's Fred just, uh, just rhyming over this, uh, this simple music, but I, I thought this was cool the way it was put together. Honestly, the simplicity kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, kind of some early Beastie Boys stuff in a little bit in some ways. The fifth song is a cover of Don't Change by In Excess, which is one of my favorite songs. And this song really caught me off guard. Um, it's a good cover. It's uh, not my favorite version of the song in any way, shape, or form by any means. But I think Durst handles it well. I like what Wes is doing on the guitar, just this you know simple acoustic riff that, that carries the song for you know roughly a three-minute runtime. But it's probably the most vulnerable that I've ever heard Fred Durst sound on an album. And uh, seeing as that I just I love the song, 
Um, you know, you're talking about this record that's, you know, 10 years after their last, and this is a band that's, they're always just going to do their thing and have fun. I think the, the song and its theme is appropriate, and, uh, and, I, and I dig it. I think it's a great cover. You Bring Out the Worst in Me is the sixth song on this record. Uh, it, this kind of sounds like the, uh, the Deftones a little bit, just kind of that, uh, that echoey, dark, new metal thing that they have going on. But uh, I really like the influence on that track. I think it's one of my favorite songs on the record for sure. And I like that it goes back to back with that cover of Don't Change. Love the Hate is Fred embracing, you know, all the haters, talking shit about himself, basically. <laughs> Pardon my French. On this song, uh, making some jokes. Really, uh, I think it's quite funny. Barnacle is your eighth track. It's like this surf rocker combination of 90s alt, bringing the two together. And I really dug that. Empty Hole is this, uh, again, this vulnerable moment, just, uh, you know, Fred and Wes on guitar there doing their thing. Your 10th track is Pill Popper, Fred calling out. The pharmaceutical industry, I think, is a good call, letting them have it. And then uh, your penultimate track is pretty funny. It's this track called Snacky Poo, this uh, just kind of funky hip-hop element to that for, like, two minutes. And then the back end of it, the coda, is just this weird interview with uh, Wes Borland, which I, I think is pretty hilarious. And then goodbye, your outro song, closing this thing out. Um, you know, I I don't listen to a lot of Limp Bizkit in general. I like them. Um, I I've, I've kind of been on the fence about this thing just because of the runtime. I wish there was a little more material, uh, but I, I I think I am gonna vinyl please this. Actually, I definitely am gonna please it. If you're a Limp Bizkit fan, you're gonna really dig this record. Um, I'm gonna please it overall, though. I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna say. I enjoyed this record. I, I, it is my hang-up that I wish it was a little longer. I wish there was more material here. But overall, this is great. Great to hear from them a decade later on. I'm really pleased with this project. I hope you enjoyed listening to this record, and I hope you find this review helpful. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel, help me do all the things to grow this project, and stay tuned throughout the week for my album reviews. We'll see you next time on The Beat Sessions.